Is Donovan Mitchell right that the Jazz got hosed by the refs last night? All right, so you might know this. The Sixers beat the Jazz in overtime. There was an incredible step back three from Joel oh, Embiid to, to send them into overtime. But instead of talking about that or the Sixers win, we're going to talk about the refs. Because after the game, a one. lot of the conversation from the Jazz was about the refs. There were some questionable calls in this game. I would say the majority of it started towards the end of the game, about 28 seconds left in regulation. There was a questionable call when Royce O'Neal appeared to have saved a ball that was going out of bounds, but then the refs kind of conferred for a long time, didn't really give a lot of transparency, it gave the ball to the Sixers. People were confused. Turns out it was the right call because the ball hit a ref. I'm getting in the weeds on these. Let's take a look at <laughs> the uh, technicals that were called on Donovan Mitchell Harris in overtime. By Simmons and B. Oh. Just dominance, incidentally, That's resorting to fouls to stop him. <laughs> so, guys, oh, the dap. Yeah, Note the dap to Ben. Putting the Mitchells hit the say. I just, <laughs> this is superstar, like, Ben and Fernando Down. I mean, here's the second one. It's justice, is what this is. Oh. Is it, Pablo? I mean. Donovan Mitchell didn't want to be there. I mean, look what happens to him. What? That's didn't want to be there. That's aggressive. And Mitchell, technical. He's gone. Looks wow. like. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Two technicals here. Second technical Joel, for talking to the Joel, ref again. He has not stopped talking yet. Joel and B telling him farewell like is, is no the kicker. <laughs> I love him oh, so much. Whoopsie. What? Oh, look, I like that. I am like a known Donovan Mitchell sympathizer, but I do like that when you accidentally hit someone with the Gatorade bucket you threw, it's nice to apologize. Uh, we probably assumed there were going to be some comments about this from the Jazz after the game, and then there were. I believe we have a clip of those. It's tough to, to go out there and see how we fight and compete and to have a game like that taken from us. And I'm never, ever one to... to, to, to Blame a ref to blame an official. I could say I, we could oh, have done more. Really? But this is getting out of hand. <laughs> you know, there have been games like this that we've won. There have been games like this that we've we've, we've lost. But this whole refereeing stuff and the way we're we're nice, we don't complain, we don't like we don't get frustrated. You know, we fight through things. And the fact that we just continually guffawing audibly get screwed in a way by this. You know, like we we won this game in my personal opinion. You know, but like I said, I'm gonna give them credit. They won, whatever, cool. But like this is it's a it's consistent thing, and you know the question is can we can we do it can we sustain it are we for real number one like yeah the hell we are and it's getting it's getting ridiculous KK that this is this is what's happening. Okay, so it's a clip of Donovan Mitchell saying I don't like to blame the refs, but I'm about to blame the refs. He also said in his opinion they won the game, and as we all know, Pablo more than anyone, opinions don't really make a difference on who wins the game. So I yeah. understand the instinct to mock it, but his teammates echoed this same feeling. And the general idea was that there seems to be some conspiracy among the refs in the league against small market teams, that big market teams get calls that small market teams do not. And so in order to try to figure out if that's true, you need some research. And Eric Walden from the Salt Lake Tribune found a website called <clears throat> pudding.cool and according what? to that scientific okay. uh, source they studied uh, the last two minute reports from 2015 to 2018 and found that four out of the top five most disadvantaged teams were small market teams does that mean anything probably not it's pudding dot cool but it is the only information that's available to be analyzed and the analysis seems to show that to me anytime there's a big conspiracy you have to think of all the people who would have to buy in and help perpetuate that conspiracy to make it happen and knowing what i know about humans we're just not usually that organized or buttoned up so I think there's a, a worthwhile discussion to be had, but I don't think when you're the team that it's affecting, it's ever going to be beneficial for you to point out that you are being victimized by the game you play for a living. Correct. I, this is a lot. I'm with you 100% on the conspiracy theory, Katie. I don't think that, but I would be curious to see 
which of those small market teams over the time of that survey were actually contenders? Because I think superstars are the bigger theme here. And Utah, while they're a small market group, now has a superstar in Donovan Mitchell, and they're the team sitting at the top of the Western Conference standings. But we should have won that game, not to mention the fact that, you know, opinions don't matter when it comes to wins and losses. There were opportunities. Maybe if you don't pick up the second tech, Donovan, maybe you're on the floor with an actual opportunity to win the ball game. Now, he was frustrated about the previous call when he got called for an offensive call for hooking Ben Simmons. It honestly could have gone either way, in my opinion. But at some point, you got to play basketball. That's the bottom line. Can I just be very blunt about this? I you're think going this is the I, I think this is the worst question I've ever seen in highly questionable oh, history, that can't which is be saying true. a lot oh, because that there was once be. a question, Katie, that was, does this cat have elite core strength? And this is worse <laughs> than that. And I say that because we've now discussed a website called pudding.cool, <laughs> which out. to me, I apologize again here. This is very pudding.uncool. Because Joel Embiid, guys, what else do you need from him? What else do you, producers up in the sky, Katie Nolan, Monica McNutt, what else do we need to get him to the top of the show? Is it a 40-point, 19-rebound game that involves a step-back three-pointer? Again, 19 rebounds, step-back three-pointer. That seems special to me against the number one team that thinks they won games that they actually lost. But I'll actually throw in some <laughs> other stuff, right? Joel Embiid now, thanks to this game, has five 40-point, 10-rebound games. That is more than the entire rest of the NBA combined. They have four. He has five. He has a 40, 50, 90 kind of year going on with a defensive player of the year candidacy campaign. That's reasonable. I don't know what else you want me, I mean him, to do to get his, I mean my, respect on this show. It's insane to me. Pablo, he has to have uh, these numbers when the refs are not a storyline all week. Sorry, Pablo. Yeah, Pablo, you sound like a ref right now. Are you a ref, bro? <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.